Hi folks, Mr. Long here. I'm going to do a screencast on how to graph rational functions where the numerator or the top is a quadratic and the bottom or the denominator is linear. So uh, you've got the graph, the graph's right there in front of you. And uh, these ones were a little bit more challenge, uh, challenging because the end behavior was quite different. And uh, so, you know what, let's begin by actually writing out what the equation would be. So if we take a look at this, um, the red is our numerator. So that means we have an x-intercept right here at 5 and another x-intercept at 3. So you can see the scale there is um, one, it's 1 by 1 in each direction. So um, what I want to do, and, and by the way, the x-intercept right there is 7. So let's go over here. And for the, um, for the top then, our x-intercepts are x equals, again, x equals 3. The red is the top, x equals 3 and x equals 5. So then what are our associated factors? Well, x minus 3 and x minus 5. For the bottom, we have a straight line and the x-intercept is at 7. So um, we can see pretty clearly then that, and I'll zoom in on that, uh, so you can see it's 3, 5, and 7 are the x-intercepts. So that's x equals 7, and then the factor associated with that is x, whoops, x equals 7 is x minus 7. So now we're going to put it into the form top over bottom. So the top, the function in the top is x minus 3 times y, x minus 5. In the bottom it's x minus 7, okay, and that's our rational function. And you can see here that... Um, that again, the degree or the exponent in the top is bigger than the bottom because the top's going to end up with x squared and the bottom is going to end up with um, just x in it. So let's simplify that. Okay, let's simplify that. So if I expand out that right there, I can do it fairly fast. So my rational function r, um, which is the top over the bottom, is going to be x squared minus 8x's plus 15 divided by x minus 7. Okay, so what we need to do now is um, figure out what that asymptote is. Now, we know, we know approximately, um, so as, as x for n behavior, we're going to infinity, then y equals, y approaches x squared minus 8x's plus 15 all over x minus 7. But I need to ask the question, how big is that 15 compared to, say, a million squared? In fact, how big is that negative 8x compared to a million squared, right? Like, negative 8 times a million is negative 8 million, but a million times a million is, is I can't even, I, I don't know off the top of my head what the units are. Um, it's way over a, a billion because uh, a billion is just a thousand million. So, in fact, that's worth almost nothing, negligible, that's worth nothing compared to, uh, say, a million squared. Negative 7 is worth nothing compared to a million squared. And so really, y gets very close to x squared over x, which really gets very close to x. So that's the global behavior, right? That's the global behavior. Um, we know that there's some y-intercept there, so it's actually, it's going to be y equals x plus b, like y equals mx plus b, for the, what we call an oblique asymptote, okay, a slant asymptote, OA, the oblique asymptote. Um, that b globally doesn't matter, but locally it actually does matter on the graph, so we need to figure out what that is. And uh, we had some different ways to do that. Um, one of the ways is with the table of values, one of the ways is with long division, um, the table of values is how we did it in class, and um, so um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and make uh, a table of values. So I've got um, x here, and then um, x squared minus eight x plus 15 <coughs> divided by uh, x minus 7 
Okay. And let's do it at 100 and at 200. At 100 and 200. So what I'm going to do now is just go to the calculator to do that. Oops, wrong calculator. That one there. So it was uh, a fraction, so you want to put a fraction into your calculator, just like that. And then it was, so let's do 100, so 100 squared minus 8 times by 100 plus 15. Then on the bottom, it was x minus 7. So that's going to be 100 minus 7. 7 and see what that equals and then I need to get that into a decimal approximation so it looks like it's 99.08 so that's yeah about it rounds to 99 so just above 99 then what I want to do is to figure out well what is it at 200 okay at 200 and uh, so let's go back to that I think I can go back to that calculation or not. Um, oh, there we go. So I go back to that calculation and I will change each of those 100s to 200s. So you can do this on your black calculator as well, right? There's no point in um, typing things in twice, like everything in twice. So that becomes 200. That 100 then becomes 200 and that 100 there becomes 200. Now, I'm going to predict it's going to be um, one less than that value, which is 199, so one less than 200. So let's take a look now at um, what the equation might be. So when I subbed in 100, I got 99. When I subbed in 200, I got 199, rounded um, to the nearest whole number. So if this number is x, what is this number here? Well, it's x minus 1, right? So that means we have what's called an oblique asymptote at y equals x minus 1. And here's what it also means, that as x approaches infinity, y approaches that original big thing, x squared minus 8x plus 15 divided by x minus 7. But that's just worth x minus 1. Okay, It's worth just x minus 1. So I want you to think about that for a second. Okay, Think about that for a second. It's worth x minus 1. And that's what we call our oblique or slant asymptote. Okay, so let's now go back up and actually start doing some sketching. So I can sketch on that oblique asymptote on that graph. And I'll do that in purple. So what does the graph of x minus 1 look like? Well, the y-intercept is negative 1, and then it's a slope of 1 over 1. So I keep going like so. So there is the asymptote right there and it will keep going like so. And that's the that's that asymptote. So then where are the vertical asymptotes? Well the vertical asymptotes are at locations where the denominator is zero. The denominator is the blue line. So that's fairly straightforward. I can put my vertical asymptote in there. So now I have my vertical asymptote. And then uh, finally, um, well not finally, but I need to look at behavior to the left and to the right of the vertical asymptote. So I'm going to zoom in. Um, so if I'm just to the left of where that vertical asymptote is, which is a very small negative y value, so that means I've got a negative 
uh, I'm dividing, right? And one of the values is small and very negative. The other y value is up here, it's positive. And a positive divided by an extremely small negative y value is down here at negative infinity. It's a single asymptote, which means the other asymptote is up here at positive infinity. And I'll zoom back out to the graph. There it is. And maybe I'll get that in um, a green color for the actual graph. So it's low here, it's high here. The 3 and the 5 are going to be our, um, that's when the numerator is 0 and the numerator is 0. Uh, if a numerator is 0, the fraction is worth 0, so those are x-intercepts. And I guess the last thing I could put on here would be uh, the y-intercept, which is again n over d. So if I'm at the y-intercept, I can see here the y-intercept in the numerator is 15. The y-intercept in the denominator is negative 7. So the top is worth 15. The bottom is worth negative 7. Negative 7 goes into 15 just over negative 2 times. So there's a y-intercept right here, just around negative 2. Okay, just around negative 2. So how do we then sketch the graph? Because I'm going to circle the points that I have there, there, and there, and I have this. So the bottom part of the graph looks like it's pretty easy to graph, right? So if I look at it, I go up, I have to go through that point, but I also have to go through this point over here, so I'm going to have to go down, hit that, and then hug that oblique asymptote. Remember, an oblique asymptote and a horizontal asymptote are both forms of the n-behavior asymptote. When I look up here, um, based on the behavior in this one where I have all those points, I know it's going to be exactly the same and it's going to be like so. Okay, so there is my graph, just like that. Okay, so that's a pretty funky graph, it really is. Um, but you can see how that's the way to do it. So the hard thing again is to go through and get that oblique asymptote plotted, get the vertical asymptote plotted, add your points, and then draw your sketch.